Hey everybody, welcome back to Kat's Cooking Kitchen. Kat with a new haircut. Um, just too much hair and too thin and too fine, couldn't take care of it, so I went really short. And it'll grow out a little bit and I think it'll be perfect then. I got what I asked for, I told her to chop it all off. So I am very happy with that. What we're going to do today is we're going to make some cowboy cookies. Some people call them ranger cookies. They're known under both. And I don't want to take up a lot of your time today. So we're going to get right to it. In my KitchenAid mixer bowl, I have two sticks of butter. That's the same as one cup. Okay? Got one cup. And now we're going to add in one cup of granulated white sugar. Okay, going to turn that on real slow. That start mixing up. And then we're supposed to have a cup of brown sugar. I guess I could measure it just to show you. I think this is about a cup. I think it's very, very close. I wasn't going to measure it, but I think I will. Sometimes I like to know if I'm still in the ballpark. It might be just a tad more than a cup, but not by much. Okay, I'm gonna let you look. See that little clump there? That's maybe, let's see, that's probably one tablespoon more than I needed. So I would have been fine. And we're going to dump our brown sugar in there and continue to blend. I need to get uh, my cookie sheet lined. And I like to use the non-stick aluminum foil because the width is perfect for the size cheese hands I have. So that's what I do. If you've never used this, it's really good stuff. So is parchment paper. If I find one that's the same width. Let's turn this up a little. Now, this is what I'm going to be doing. See that rim of butter? I'm going to take my spatula. I'm going to push that down into the mix. And keep mixing a little bit. We want it to come together real nicely smooth and it's doing that except for the butter I had to put back down in the pan okay now we're going to add our eggs which it calls for two eggs okay oh sorry guys I shifted to the counter now okay first egg Now, I didn't get any shells in it, but if you do, stick your eggshell down in there close to it, and you can, it's almost like a magnet. It'll draw itself to that lining in your egg. Okay, there's the first egg. Where's my vanilla? Spoon of vanilla, that's what I thought. And our second egg goes in. No eggshell in that one either. Really helps when you hit it on the counter. It tends to push the egg up. And 
Okay, let's get that a little higher. Get that mixed in really well. And our teaspoon. Teaspoon of vanilla. How can anything smell that good and taste so bad <laughs> if you try? I don't know any little kid that didn't get in the kitchen with their mom or grandma cooking and smell that vanilla and be warned not to taste it because it wouldn't taste good and they tasted it anyway. <laughs> it's just the way it goes. Okay, so now... We've got our two cups of flour here I'm going to sift. And we need a half a teaspoon of baking powder. Half a teaspoon of baking powder. pinch of salt. No, that's not staying open, is it? Oop, well, not quite that much. About a third of a teaspoon to me is a, a pinch or a dash. And one teaspoon of baking soda. And then I'm going to sift them together into a bigger bowl. There's a teaspoon of baking soda. We have our oven. It is preheated to 350 degrees. Sitting over there ready. And that's all there is to that. This is why I sift it in case it has any hard little lumps in it. Okay. Now we need to. Oh, I thought it was on the <laughs> Now, I want to scrape down my bowl again before I start adding the flour. And sometimes it's easier to go straight down than it is to go around and around. See? And we have that ready. Now, you all know that if you put in your flour too fast, it's going to go all over the place. So what I try to do is do it as slow as I can, and sometimes that isn't slow enough. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my quarter cup scoop and put that in by the scoop bowls. And I'll rotate from side to side. Let it get mixed in there pretty good. This is probably the most time-consuming part because you really do have to be careful how much flour you put in at once or it's just going to spray all over your kitchen. And of course, I keep adding my beater there. It's coming together pretty good. See, I pushed it all down instead of spreading it around. And 
that's our flour. Okay. this dough scraped off our paddle I love to make cookies I love to bake I probably love baking almost as much as I love cooking I love trying new recipes do have a lot of good recipes already and they filter in along with some of these new ones I've never made these cookies before but they're just oatmeal chocolate chip cookies with the addition of a secret ingredient and y'all might have done it before have y'all made uh, any cookies with potato chips in it I have yet to do that but I'll bet they're good I love them with pretzels and almonds, coconut. I like pecans and cookies. I'm not, I should be more picky <laughs> when it comes to cookies, but I'm not. I like a lot of different things. Okay, so now we have two cups of oatmeal to go along with the two cups of flour and a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of baking powder, and a pinch of salt, along with the two sticks of butter, a cup of white granulated sugar, a cup of brown sugar, and a teaspoon of vanilla. That's what's in our bowl so far. And they called for six ounces of chocolate chips. I'm not sure, but I'm going to put a cup. I'm, I'm not going to weigh them. I just put a cup in there. And I want to get those mixed in there a little bit before I add our last ingredient. It's going to get broken up in there anyway. There's nothing I can do about that. I hope that's enough chocolate chips. I know it's over six ounces, so... I think I'll add another quarter cup. of chocolate chips. I think the recipe can handle another quarter cup, maybe. There we go. That'll be great. So I probably put a cup and a quarter of chips in this recipe. This is, you know, man, I'll tell you what, when I used to do recipes for the first time, I would not deviate from the original recipe whatsoever. But now, just like the chocolate chips, I thought it could use a few more. So I added a few more. And if there's an ingredient you don't like, like if you don't like chocolate, maybe you like uh, peanut butter. You could use peanut butter chips. Or what would be really good would be the butterscotch. Butterscotch and oatmeal go together like peanut butter and jelly, as far as I'm concerned. The last to entry will be our two cups of cornflakes. Get some of those worked in. This, de this dough is stiff, so they're going to break up, but I think that's probably intentional they want it to get down and pull up from the bottom any of the dough that hasn't gotten any of the cornflakes in it yet and then we've probably got almost a cup left to put in it and then that's it that's our ingredients we're gonna dip them up let me see how big they say to do it uh Large tablespoons on the cookie sheet. Well, I don't know whether to make them like 
Texas size cowboy cookies or to keep them a little smaller? I don't know. <laughs> it's really heavy. <laughs> I think that'll be good. We can stir as we go if we need to. Now what I'm going to do is bring over my cookie sheet that's ready to go. Okay, let's see. Hmm, which scoop? I'm not sure. I think I'm going to go with the big one. Let's see how big it is. Hmm. I don't know how much they spread out. So we'll just do six on the first sheet and see how that works out. Or maybe I can get eight. I'm not sure. Let's see. This is probably a two tablespoon scoop. My other one's about a one tablespoon. So when it says a large tablespoons, so I would guess they want between one and two tablespoons on the cookie sheet. And these I love because they come out uniform. Okay guys, that's it. How much time we got? Okay, it took me 17 minutes. You're going on pause till they're coming out of the oven and ready to taste. Hey, welcome back. Um, cookies are all but done. I probably have another six to put in the oven yet, which will give me about 30 cookies this size. Bigger than the palm of my hand. So if you make them a little smaller, you'll get a few more. Uh, looks really good, doesn't it? I can even see the cornflake in it. Let's taste it. Mm. I love the chew from the oatmeal. A little crunch, crunchy corn. And the chocolate. These are really, really good. I didn't, uh, next time I make them, I was giving some of these away to somebody I didn't know uh, their preferences. So I didn't put any coconut or uh, nuts in it. Sorry, I thought I had a groundhog in the backyard. <laughs> I wanted to see what it was. We've already had the deer come up and wipe out the feeders. We put out black sunflower seeds and bird seed in two different feeders. It was probably about a quarter to ten this morning, between a quarter to ten and ten o'clock. My husband Dave put the feed out in the feeders for the birds. And we did see a lot of activity with the birds on it. And then about two o'clock, here comes a big old doe. And it looks like she wiped out both feeders. Now, he doesn't fill them clear full just because he knows we're going to feed the deer. So he puts a little in every every other day right now because birds have plenty to, to forage for that they don't actually really need a lot from us. But we enjoy seeing them out there. So we see bunnies and we see raccoons and uh, stray cats. Stray cats are a problem. People, <laughs> I just don't understand why you want a kitty and then you cry when it gets run over on the road. Or it disappears and never comes back. They're here trying to catch our birds. Now, we don't hurt them. If I see them, I just chase them away. But these are not scroungy, feral kitties. These are well-fed somebody has for a pet kitties. So, it's kind of a pet peeve. I, I don't let my dogs run around and pee and poop in other people's yards, but people with cats think that's okay. I don't, I don't get the difference, but 
hey, that's just me. And I love cats. I love them. But I don't, I, well, we had a farm once, and yeah, we had cats out in the barn, but they didn't run over the neighbors to poop. They stayed in their own yard. They pretty much, unless they went back, we had a, we connected to a big reservoir property, and they'd go back that way toward the river and, and hunt, but they didn't wander off too far very often. If they did, they usually ended up a blot on the road, which was very, very sad. Um, but I'm allergic to cats, and having cats in the house is really tough. And if you have a barn and you have horses and other animals, you need some barn kitties to, to keep the rodent population down. So it's the only thing you can do. But back to the cookies. They're the most important thing. I'm telling you, these are awesome, awesome, awesome cookies. Mmm. So good. I have to take the rest of that one out and give it to Dave. Okay. I have one more pan in the oven, one more pan to put in the oven, and then I'm done. And I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you'll try them. If you like coconuts, pecans, walnuts, almonds, I was going to put some almonds and coconut in mine, but that's what I'm going to add the next time because I love coconut. And coconut and chocolate, almonds, almond joy cookies, kind of, maybe. I don't know, but I bet they're good. So... It's Wednesday night for you working that get that don't work weekends. It's the halfway point to your Friday night. So go out and enjoy the rest of your week. Please drink a lot of water if you're up here in this heat where we are. It is killer. You can't even step outside. I mean, you're just you just get drenched. It's terribly hot and humid. So and it's supposed to stay that way for a while. So please take care of your animals. If you have, you know, cows, horses, sheep, goats, whatever, rab uh, bunnies, make sure they have water. We used to put a frozen pop bottle in the cages with our bunnies because they stress so bad when it's this hot. And you'd give them that and they'd lay up against that to stay cool. And, of course, we gave them fresh water two or three times a day, so it was cool. So it's a lot of work, but... You know, you got to take care of everybody, including yourself. So go out and take care of yourself. Have some fun this weekend. But have it inside <laughs> in the air conditioning. <laughs> Do I sound like a whip? Yeah, I kind of am. Okay. <laughs> have a great evening, everybody. I sure enjoy having you. Come join me in the kitchen. It's Cat's Cooking Kitchen on YouTube and Facebook. Come on back, y'all, and see me. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Good night.